All right, everybody, this is Kelly from Heels, Deals, and Wheels Mobile Home Investing Course, and we have Miss Lakeisha C. Brooks. Lakeisha, how are you doing? Lakeisha is a mobile home investor. You have several hats, right, Lakeisha? You're not just a mobile home investor. You do other things, but introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, thank you for having me, Kelly. So uh, I do a, different, a lot of different things, as you mentioned. So I do mobile home investing. That's where I started. I have single family homes. I have a nine to five as well, Kelly. I know you have a nine to five too. I have a nine right. to five too. And I also right. have a consulting business where I focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging as well. And in my nine to five, I'm the head of DEIB, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging at the International Coaching Federation. So I do quite a few things, actually. Yeah. It sounds like it. So, <laughs> so Lakeisha, let's start off with the job thing. Because people say, well, Kelly, why do you and your brother still have a job? Um, and I, I'll let you elaborate on that. Why do you still have a job and you, you're you a successful mobile home investor, successful yeah. single family home investor? Why do you still have a job? Can you elaborate on that? Two big things, health insurance. Because um, when I did things on my own, I was paying $292 for private insurance and I have great health. So that's number one, that helps. Um, number two, another reason I have it is I something called student loans. I have a lot of those. Okay. <laughs> they don't pay themselves. And third, I mean, I like what I do. I really enjoy extra income. I enjoy what I what I do in diversity space. I have a consulting business doing the exact same thing. Um, and if I can have an a organization pay me for what I love to do, I might as well do it. So for me, um, I have the bandwidth. I have the time to do it. And again, like I said, I love insurance. I love to be able to go <laughs> get health care if I need it. And I also um, like the opportunity to pay off my student loans with my extra businesses and I don't have to touch the money that I make from my job. So that helps right. me a lot too. Yeah. Right, great answer, great answer. So how long have you been in the mobile home business and, and why mobile homes? Well, I grew up in, in mobile homes. Um, so starting at five years old up until I graduated high school, I lived in mobile homes. Um, the entire time, my dad was eligible for a VA loan. So we didn't technically have to live in a mobile home. He just was not educated in the VA loan enough to do it. Now he actually lives in a home that we got financed through the VA. Um, but prior to that, he was like, Keisha, just didn't know. So I grew up in mobile homes. Um, and actually the home that he lives in now, before that, we were living in a mobile home that they got when I was maybe 17, 16. I was about to graduate high school and they had it for about 20 years. And at one point I was like, dad, you need to get rid of that. Okay. You and mom are getting older. You know, let's get you the actual single family home. And he says, you should, nobody's going to buy this. I refinanced it. And I was like, you refinanced what? <laughs> you should have <laughs> paid this thing off. And he was like, yeah, refinanced at 10%. And I was like, okay, I got to get you out of this. So what I did was I paid off the remaining of the balance. It was $14,000. It was a four, two double wide. You know, we call those unicorns. You don't find a lot of four, two right. double wides. I got one of those. Um, and he paid the lot rent. So I renovated it. My brother was my first contractor, like you <laughs> brothers and family. We had someone else finish it. And by the time we were done, um, uh, we were able to take that four to two and that I paid 14,000 for, we put about 10, $12,000 into it. And then we sold it on payments for $87,000. Um, so it was the very first one I did. We did it less than a year ago. Um, I think we finished that one probably on the May, June-ish. And I started there and I was like, ooh, I ain't really good at this. <laughs> so right. I just started investing more in the mobile home. Of course, I switched over to single family homes to get that mixture of stuff. But it's been about a year or so just wanting to help my parents get out of the mobile home they were in and finally get them into the single family home. And my mom was able to experience that. She passed away a few months ago, but she was able I'm to- I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. But I was able to help her get into that single family home again, like she grew up in. Um, before she passed away. So that was also really good for me to be able to do that for her. So, right, right. yeah. So Lakeisha, so you helped your parents out and you got somebody on notes. Did you use a mortgage loan originator or you created the note yourself? I created the note myself. I did add interest because I'm not a mortgage loan originator and I'm not trying to get in trouble. So I did not include any interest or anything like that with that. Um, so we did it that way. We did go to the bank to have, no, actually no, we went to an attorney and had someone look at it as well. We used the same attorney that my dad used for his closing months earlier, because I knew him. And so we went there and uh, we took care of the signing there and um, they're still paying and um, they're fantastic. They've kind of made the home their own. So, which well, I enjoy. That's good. 
Well, that's yeah. good. That's, and you're right. Those four bedrooms, those are very hard to come by. Right? <laughs> we own one, and those are very, very hard to come by. So and it was very the very first one I had, and it was seventeen hundred square feet. So it was down wow. with it. <laughs> wow. Well, so Lakeisha, are you licensed to buy and sell mobile homes or single family homes? Are you licensed in any any one of those areas? No, I'm not licensed in any area. I'm not a realtor in any sort, way, fashion, or form. Um, I do use realtors for some of the stuff that I do, especially the single family homes. My sister's a realtor. She helps a lot with certain things. She's definitely, she's not as, um, extroverted as me when it comes to dealing with people, but she knows a lot of the business side of the stuff. So that helps a lot to be able to partner with somebody that does know the stuff. So I'm not licensed myself in any of these areas, um, but I do have those that have the knowledge where I may not have it. And then of course I use people on social media groups if they have some extra knowledge that I don't have either. So. Right, right, right. So what would you say your favorite strategy is since you've been in the mobile home business? My favorite strategy, uh, working with parks. I know some people don't like parks, but I, I, I enjoy it. I can get a lot of them at once. Um, I don't move homes. I don't have any intention to ever move a home. So again, everybody's different. You know, I have a friend of mine. He likes to get land and move it. That's not my thing. Uh, I don't like to, I don't wholesale. Not my thing. It's like a rat race. Not interested. Um, so I go to parks a lot of times. Of course, the first one was my parents. I'll go to parks and I will get some in a park. I'll renovate them and I'll rent them out. Sometimes I'll sell on pavement, um, build a relationship with the park owner. Sometimes I have one now. I have a good relationship with her and um, she has a few others that she may want to sell. So we just, you know, I bought five from that park. Um, still have two of them, sold three of them, and she has about six or seven. So you just build those relationships. And for me, again, that's my strategy, parks and rent and or parks and you renovate and you sell them on notes. But that's just what works for me. So Lakeisha, when you say working with the park owner, you are buying the mobile home flat out or what, what are you doing? Yeah, I buy the home flat out. So I usually go in and I don't hit over a certain amount because Hey, I'm cheap and I'm um, <laughs> not going to spend a lot of money on a home. Um, so I'll go, I pay in cash for all of my mobile homes. I've never bought a mobile home any other way besides cash. My single family home, whole different ballgame. But all my mobile homes, I buy in cash. Um, and then I go and then I renovate them as well. Um, again, I have four park owners that I work with, great relationships. Even the one that I renovated for my parents, the park owner was fantastic. He helped us to be able to get the new owners, get the water in their name, electricity, because they needed that information. And he was fantastic. And it, I just hit the jackpot with the very first one and the first park owner. And not everybody's been so easy to work with. But overall, I definitely think that um, that's the best strategy for me. And again, I usually just buy them all in cash when I get my homes. Right. <clears throat> so people, uh, they a lot of new investors, they have like analysis paralysis, number one. And number two, they're afraid to talk to the park manager and the owner. But your situation is different. You went in there and said, hey, I'm buying several homes. Yeah. And so that way, that relationship really started off great, right? Because you had the money and they had, had the homes. So what what price are, are, are we looking at? You said you're cheap. What, what, yeah. what price... Are you not going to go over? Um, it really depends for the most part. So the most that I've spent on, on a mobile home is probably 15, 14, 15. Those were for double wides, three, two, four, two. Um, those are the most single wides. I'm usually not going to spend more than maybe like five, 6,000, depending on the condition of them as well. Because, you know, we have to cons consider that as well, how much work needs to be done in it, the year of it, things like that. But that's where I like to stay in uh, and, my, and my sweet spot as well. Um, so anywhere, like I said, no more than 14, 15 for a double watt, again, depending on the condition and about five, 6,000, depending on the condition of a single watt as well. Okay. And so what, what year are we talking about and what state, uh, Lakeisha, are we talking about that you find these prices with these mobile homes? Because right. people don't believe you can find cheap mobile homes, but tell us the state. Oh, you can find some for $500. Uh, the walls might be falling apart, but you can find a lot of mobile homes. <laughs> uh, I do Georgia and Florida. So I live north of Atlanta. Um, in Cartersville, Georgia. And I do not do homes in this area. They're a little bit more expensive in the Atlanta area. All of my homes are in South Georgia, Valdosta, Adale, Albany, um, and North Florida, Havana, Tallahassee. That's my sweet spot. I'm from Valdosta. So I know, I know it like the back of my hand. Uh, and so when we talk about year, I think my 
oldest home. It's like maybe a 1998 or something like that. Doesn't mean I won't get anything older. It's just, that's just not what I've come across yet um, as far as my inventory as well. But if it's something older, um, depending on condition, and we know the resale of mobile homes, they appreciate pretty quickly. My strategy will probably be to rent it, um, depending again, the condition and whatnot, because it, all of this depends on what strategy you use. So you may go into, I had one home, I was like, I'm gonna sell on payments, but we had so much work that needed to be done. My ROI would have been so slim that I said, I'll make more money just renting this thing out. And therefore we switched the strategy be, because we knew we had to, if we wanted to keep the margin that we wanted, it was gonna take longer amount of time, but it depends, it really depends on what strategy you're trying to do. What's your end game? So, and so, Lakeisha, at that dollar point, how much would you spend on rehab in a mobile home? Do you have a set dollar? Like, I'm not going to pay mm -hmm. no more than. I don't. I don't have a set dollar. Um, it really, again, just depends. I had one. I spent thirty five hundred on it. It was a two one. We probably put maybe two thousand into it to renovate it, and then we just rent it for nine seventy five every month. Um, the fifteen thousand dollar mobile home, we probably put around the same amount into that one as well because the person we bought it from had already done some work to it and just okay. could not move it. And I'm a salesperson. So I went and got a renter before I was done renovating. So right. for me, it really just depends because as I mentioned earlier, I went in with one amount for a rehab based on the contractor's quote, but then we got in there and we're like, it's Florida. I'm trying to it. <laughs> so it then went from, $10,000 that we went up to like $17,000. Same thing happened with my single family homes. You go with one amount and then you go up to another. So at that point it was either, okay, I'm going to stop in the middle of this rehab and do what with this home, or you just going to have to keep paying to get it up. And we just had to pay the additional amount and then switch our strategy to then renting it versus selling it. And so Lakeisha, the homes that you own, what is, you know, the lot rent about? Um, the lowest, well, if I sell on payments, I don't deal with the lot rent because I make them do that directly with the park. I don't deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, so for those that we still own um, outright, I mean, we own all of them until somebody pays them off. But the ones that are rented, the lot rent is anywhere from 250 to 450 So we like to stay in that 300 mark, but we do have uh, one that is 450 down in Florida. And in Florida, their lot rents are a little bit higher than South Florida is what I noticed as well. Okay. And then once, okay, they pay the lot rent and then you take the overage about what's the average overage you have between the lot rent and how much the tenant is going to be paying you. $700. But $700. Man, I'm telling you, you putting a smile on my face because really I have talked to a couple of investors, but not a whole lot of people are renting like you and I and my brother are doing. Mm -hmm. So you, I, I didn't even know that you, you rented your mobile homes out. So what okay. is your rationale? You like renting or seller financing? Because you, you've done both. Yeah, I've done both. Um, it really depends, honestly. Like the, the long game renting works for me. Um, I have a really good, it took me a while. I got a really good handyman down in South Georgia. It turns out he's like a friend of my cousin. Those people are great. You know, right. like, because you're like, you can't screw me over. I know your people. Um, I mean, it really depends. <laughs> my seller uh -huh. financing people are great. Whenever things break down, they know not to bother me because you own it. So you fix it. It really, honestly, it's it's both the same because I have really fantastic renters that are great. They don't complain. I have seller finance, of course, they don't complain either. So for me, I don't prefer one or the other. They're they're both great. It just really depends mm -hmm. on like what's my ROI, <laughs> honestly, as yeah. to which one I prefer and what I'm gonna go with. I knew the very first one with my parents one, I was going to definitely sell it the finance that one because I needed to recoup some of my money. I spent a lot of the money in my second, my business to actually fund the rehab. So I was using my own money and I needed to recoup some, recoup some of that. So I knew that I was going to do that. So they paid a nice amount of down payment and I needed to do that. The other ones, I didn't need it as much. So that also makes a difference for me. It's like, how soon do I need this money up front versus the long game? So it really just depends. Right, right, right. And so when you're seller financing your properties out about how much do you ask as, as a down payment? 10, 20, 30 percent? Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. So um, usually it's usually a dollar amount, actually. Um, I think the least amount that we've done is five. I think the first people did was eight thousand down, which would have put them at 10 percent. The second young lady would have put her at about 12 percent down based on the, the cost of the home, so yeah. 
And then Lakeisha, are you using like a, a property manager or anything I like had that? To. I had to now. I did not, at first it was me. Um, and then it was, it was just a lot. And I recently hired one about two or three weeks ago. I had a property manager. Um, she does a, a, my single family homes. We're in the process of, we have some of those and three of the mobile homes actually. So yeah, I have one now. And she's in Valdosta actually, because that's where most of my homes are. Okay. And Lakeisha, I know we talked a little bit off offline, but how many deals do you have under your belt? How many properties do you own as of today? Yeah. So when we started, we had uh, 11 total deals, um, three of which I've, I've sold off. Um, and then I have eight right now under my belt. I have five mobile homes and three single family homes currently right now. So I went and switched to single family homes early this year. So we acquired three of them between January and January 1st and February 28th, we acquired three single family homes as well. Okay. All right. And, and, and not to get too much in your business, the mobile homes you said you pay cash for. So how did you come up with that capital in order to, to buy those uh, mobile homes? Yeah. Um, so for the majority of them initially I had already, I had like $70,000 in my consulting business account. So it was just take it there. Then I was like, okay, I want to do a little bit more. So I got a home equity line of credit uh, for additional stuff, but I actually didn't use it for that. I wound up not having to use it for that at all. Um, but I did have those extra funds if I needed to do that as well. So then initially it was from my other business and I was like, well, I can use some other extra funds if I need them in my home equity line of credit. And I think I only spent maybe 13, 14,000 of that from the home equity line of credit for another mobile home because I didn't need it. But if I if I actually had it, if like I got actually needed for other homes, I could have done that. So that's what I did. And now I use money from the consulting business to also fund additional monies that I need as well. Okay. I don't touch any money for my job. So. All right. All right. I feel the same way. So, Lakeisha, how are you going about finding these deals? You're driving for dollars, bandit signs? What are you doing? Um, I don't drive for anything whatsoever. I don't have time for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I just go Craigslist uh, Marketplace. And then from there, like, for example, the one I did in Florida, I found it on, I was on somebody's list or something or whatever. And then I just went and got a few of them. And I still have a relationship with the, the new owner there. Um, the one at Adele, I found it on Craigslist or um, Facebook Marketplace or something. So I build a relationship there. So I just start on that because I don't have the time to drive around and do all those things. I just, I don't have the bandwidth. And again, my homes are in Valdosta. I live in Atlanta. So right. that that's a lot for me to do. And before my mom passed away, she would drive around and say, oh, can I see this? Can I see this? And I wasn't quite in my criteria, but she definitely was trying to be as helpful as she could to help me find some deals right. as well. Right, yeah. right, right. So these deals that are out of state, what, what do you do? You try to have boots on the ground there and then you just try to sell it flat flat out or how do you do that? Well, Tallahassee from about also is only an hour and like 15 minutes. So it's, it's not far. It's not far, really. okay. No, okay. no, no. So I well, would you consider it. any any farther than that? Uh, I mean, yeah, it just, it just depends on, you know, the home. I'm talking to a gentleman right now, nice young kid. He has some stuff in a, in a different state. So I told him, show me some photos. Let me see it. If it's worth my while and if it's enough of them, I'll go on a plane. I have a lot of Delta Sky Miles, the beauty of my actual job and my consulting business. A lot of Sky Miles, if it's worth my while, then I'll go look at them and check them out and things like that. So it really just depends on the deal and it has to be volume. I'm not going to go for one home in the middle of Wisconsin somewhere. So, right, right, yeah. right, right. So can you walk us through like your current deal, what you got going on right now as far as mobile home on the mobile home aspect of it? Um, none, because <laughs> I've been doing most <laughs> of my stuff with single family homes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. What about the previous deal, your previous mobile home deal, if you don't have anything current? What was my last mobile home deal? It's probably in August of last year, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it was probably August when we when we did the last deal, which was the, the one in Florida. And we did, we purchased about five of those in that park and um, fixed up two of them, um, started on a third one and then life happened. You know, my mom had a stroke. And so we just 
as we would get into the process, it was becoming exhausting for me to do all that, take care of my mom, my dad, all of these things. Um, mm -hmm. So when I decided to switch strategies and go single family homes, I sold three of those homes because again, it was just becoming draining and exhausting for me with a lot of things I had going on. Emotionally, I just couldn't do it. Um, so that was the last deal in about August when we finished them. It was probably December or so when we started to sell off the rest of them that we had and get people in the ones that we did um, have a chance to rehab as well. Okay. All right. And so, uh, Lakeisha, how do you guys check for uh, liens in, where you where you're at? You know, if a mobile home has a lien or something on it, how do you guys check it? Right. So the first thing I always do is, is title in hand. That's the first thing I ask on it as well. Um, as far as any liens or anything like that. So we can go through um, uh, attorney or any type of title company if we need to and whatnot. It's interesting because when I closed one of my deals for my single family home, I had an attorney ask me, how do you do that? Yeah. He said, because it's exhausting. He said it was probably one of the most tough deals he's ever done is finding the liens and the titles from mobile homes um, because it was so difficult to do. And it is. I mean, I have one home now is a bonded title and trying to figure out if there was a lien on it and all this other thing. I had one mobile home partner that wouldn't sell me one because they were just like, it's just going to be so exhausting to get this. And we don't want to sell you this home until we get through the stuff. And then I had another mobile home part. She didn't know if she was getting fake titles or liens on them or things like that mm -hmm. as well. So and she was like, well, I don't want to get you involved in any of that. So yeah. I, I've seen it. And um, luckily, no one has sold me anything want to lean on it. But that's only because they were honest. But they could have just as easily done it where title was fake. There was lean on all these other kind of things. But I've been lucky to, to be with people who haven't done that to me. But I came pretty close to, to having that stuff done to me myself. So Wow. So yeah. it's not like you guys can go to the DMV or anything like that or title. I company. didn't have to. I didn't, I didn't have to do that, but um, mm -hmm. I think that the park owners were doing that. That's how they were finding out and letting me know what's going on. So, wow. wow. Yeah. You know, here in the state of Texas, we're able to check that online, man. I don't know why they don't make that like, you know, it's be so much, you know, hassle free for you guys who don't have that. It's just and they amazing. may have it. I, you know, they just, when I was going to buy them, they just were very honest and told me about it. I, I don't know what process they may have used, but um, yeah. That was just some of the things that I ran against when dealing with the park owners who were letting me know these things were going on. Okay. Yeah. Thank goodness they were honest. Definitely. Oh, yeah. So Lakeisha, how do you, okay. So you buy a mobile home, you rehab it, and then you sell it to somebody else. How do you determine the price for that particular mobile home? Cause a lot of people say, well, how do you determine the price? What you going to sell um, it for? Yeah, I know that there, there are some people that will go through research and, and see what the market looks like and things like that, um, which you can do as well. I, I know how much work I put into it. I know how much profit margin I want to make. Sometimes I can't make it. I do see what other mobile homes have sold for in the area. Um, and I make that determination from there as well. Um, living in mobile homes all my life, I know kind of what the mobile homes are worth and whatnot. Um, so I do a really good guesstimation, see what the market is looking like. We all know now the market's cooling down. Doesn't matter if it's mobile homes, single family homes, it's cooling down in general, rent's going down. So you also want to use common sense as well. Um, right. I, you want to price it so high, but that's not what's happening right now. So for me, I kind of look at well, what, what is the ROI in it? How much money I put into it? What do I like to make out of it? Compare that versus what's selling what's on the market right now, talk to realtors, talk to my sister to figure out what the market looks like to make that determination and go from there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, Lakeisha, I see that single family homes are going down, but I really don't see where mobile homes are going up or down. It's pretty much like leveled off. I've been waiting for something to, <laughs> for something to happen because in the beginning we had got like a bunch of free mobile homes. Now you can't yeah. find a free mobile home to save your life. So, yeah. so do you think they, they are going down or? Um, it, it's hard to say in general because of that. Because like I said, I haven't really been in that market for a few months now. Um, so that's hard for me to answer as far as mobile homes comparative to single family homes in general. Because like I said, mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't been in that industry probably since a few months to kind of see mm -hmm. if that's cooled down as much. Right. As homes, or is it just in general? 
that the market's cooling down in general. So, so you had any obstacles since you've been in the mobile home uh, business? Any issues oh, yeah. with the park manager? Oh, come on. Not a park manager, a young lady new to this is the second deal we did, second or third, something like that. The girl said, Hey, I have the title, you know. Um, she's we went to the bank and I was like, Okay, let's get the title, or whatever. And then I'm calling, trying to put things in my name, you know, do my due diligence. And then I, they're like, oh, no, no, the title is not on her name. It's in the park's name. And they said, we need to bill a sale. I said, okay. They said, no, 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 no. We need to bill a sale from the person that sold it to you, that sold it to her, that sold it to her. And I was like, now what in the world is going on? <laughs> so then I finally, finally get in touch with the park owner. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. We keep the title until you upgrade the home to our standards. And then we'll give you the title. It's like, so you want me to put work into this home and I don't get the title until I put work in the home? I was like, I'm not doing that. And then the young lady was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention that, that um, she's like, but I, I don't think I understood it. And I literally was like, did she just really do this? And so it was just a tug of war because they're like, oh, you need to sign a lease for the park. And I was like, see, all of this was not mentioned to me. And mm -hmm. I said, I didn't buy it from you all. I don't have agreement with you all it was just a lot of tug of war with a lot of that so we just said you know what we're just gonna wash our hands clean of it because the young lady wanted getting evicted because it was still in her name so she was still responsible for lot rent and all these other stuff and she was not budging on I didn't know she's playing stupid I didn't know I didn't know they tricked me too so we just took it as a wash and a loss and we lost a few thousand there probably like two or three thousand and I was like uh-uh I need to know the title. This is what I was telling you about liens and lien holders and who has the title. That is why we were even more diligent about it because that situation was pretty like very bad to say the yeah. least. And like I said, we just took the loss in it and it was just like, we need to do more due diligence, not just on the home, but the back end on who actually has the title, whose name is it in. You know, there was no lien on it per se, but it was, she didn't have it and they weren't going to give it to us. So we knew that we need to do more due diligence at that time. So it was a lesson learned very quickly yeah. on doing other work into this business. Yeah, I was in a similar situation for about five minutes. <laughs> this family tried to sell me a mobile home that still had a uh, had a uh, loan on it. I'm like, y'all don't even own it. How are you going to mm -hmm. try to sell it to me? You don't even own it, you know? And then, you know, all of a sudden they was like acting all confused and bewildered and all this kind of, and come to find out they were going to get evicted. That that was the whole thing in a nutshell. And they were trying to get money out of me thinking I didn't know no better. So right. you got to be very, very careful uh, with that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and another thing, Lakeisha, what do you think about buying a mobile home that's not pre-HUD that only has a bill of sales? Now, I know some states only require you to have a bill of sales. Oh, what are your what are your thoughts? Florida's one of them. Georgia. Georgia. Oh, Georgia's one. Bill of sale. Yeah. So yeah. um bill of sale is fine in, in Georgia. Um I usually like titles <laughs> personally. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it works for some people, I don't tell people not to do it if that works for them. Just personally, me, I prefer to have a title. I prefer to have it. I mean, I paid upwards of two thousand dollars just in going to switch it in my name. I'd rather do that, know it's mine, it's my property, than a bill of sale, and then something happens. You just never know. But that's just personally me, but I'm not against or for anybody that wants to buy a home and it's just a bill of sale, or they got to go get a bonded title, whatever. It just whatever works for you. And if you want to take their risk, go ahead. If it's allowed in your state, go ahead. That's how yeah. I feel about it. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I don't play that bill of sale stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, and I'm not too familiar with the laws in, in, in Georgia, but how many mobile homes can you purchase before you need a license? I think it's 10, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so you're getting up there if you haven't surpassed that number already. In Georgia, what, what I've gotten, I've only gotten four in Georgia. Oh, four in Georgia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you remember still the other were in Florida. They were having Okay. Okay. I got you. Yeah. So what are your plans if you continuously buy in, in Georgia? Are you going to eventually take the leap and get you a license? or I had already looked into it anyway. Um, if it was something I wanted to do. So if, if it has to be done, that I'll get it done. But like I said, I don't know that exact number. So please do not quote me out there, people in Georgia. I don't know the number. Um, but I did look into what that number may be. I know I had not exceeded or hit it or anything like that. 
Um, but if it's something that needs to be done, then I'll get it done because I'm all about compliance. This is the same person that was like, I'm going to pay, I mean, I'm going to pay all these taxes on my stuff. Um, but yeah, so right now, like I said, you know, my focus is a single family home. So when it comes down again, back into the mobile home game again, that's definitely something I'll look at because I bought a lot of mobile homes pretty quickly. It just happened that they're in separate states. So that helped me a lot because they're, they were not all in Georgia. I right. split it up a little bit. So. So Lakeisha, you've been blessed like we have in as in uh, finding a um, handyman that, you know, is very handy and knows what he's doing and, and is not nickel and diamond you to death. Have you run into any bad situations with your handyman and how do you go about paying your handyman? Uh, so the handyman is different than the contract. Right. Our handyman was someone that is now doing uh, miscellaneous jobs on the job contract. Oh, yeah, we've had a. We've had a lot of issues with contractors. Oh my goodness. Like it's mm -hmm. been whoa. So when the first one wasn't as bad, because like I said, we did it, it's my brother, then we had to use somebody else. Um, the main things were people getting things done on time. Um, and then it came down to the Florida stuff. And so I if that was very difficult. We finally found somebody that was really good, but at the time my husband was helping that because he is a contractor. Not in this, not this capacity, but he's a contractor. He was trying to like schedule people. People wouldn't answer the phone. They wouldn't show up, <laughs> which is, oh my God, it was a nightmare, you know? And like, we pay, we pay on time and people just would not show up to the job or they'll stop or they have like 18 other jobs they're doing. So your job is just one of many that's in rotation. Um, so yeah, we've had a lot of that before. And like I said, the one in Florida, part of the reason we stopped it's like, okay, this is just becoming too much. But we found a really, really good guy, Luis, who finalized all the jobs. He was fantastic. And he was just like a one-man crew. He can come in there and do it. So we found him. We got a really good crew in Valdosta now. They're doing our single family home. And it's ran by a woman. She doesn't do the handyman stuff, but she runs it. And she's like, they need to be done on this time. And she is making sure it's done on time. And I'm like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> milestone there's like no days off she's like look they're going to finish this job before they go to the next job and it has been heaven sent and I wish I had her for my mobile homes you know I'm glad she's for my single family homes but I wish I found her from the very beginning to do my stuff down there because they do great work and they're on time and it's been the least amount of headache I've had since I started this process actually so, Lakeisha, are you paying your your handyman or your contractor up front, or, or how you a percentage up front, or how are you doing that? Yeah, well, the handyman gets an hourly rate because again, he goes in and does like you know the mate stuff and whatnot. Contractor, we did a deposit initially, and then we would do it based on when they were finished. When I did the one in Tallahassee, uh, I paid per day. So you did your job, you got paid per day. That actually worked really well. My husband and I did not really agree on how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. but it was my business. So ultimately I made a choice <laughs> per day. Um, it actually works. I had a, a, a guy friend of mine who actually does that contract and stuff. And he said, try doing it per day. And it worked. This last group of people that are doing my single family home because, and that's a whole different ball game, but because we have, we got a loan for it to do the rehab, the bank is actually going to pay that upon completion of the project. So that's easy for me because they're going to cut the check for it. So, okay. yeah. And, and is that particular mobile home, is that on land or is that in the park? The one, the all one? of the one, all the ones we have are in park, every one of them, even the one with my parents, that's also in a park. Okay. Is it hard to get a loan on, on a used mobile home that, that needs work? Is it hard? I, I, I don't know. I've never had to get a loan for any of, this, any of my mobile homes. So I honestly have no idea. Never even had mm -hmm. to try to do that. So. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, uh, Lakeisha, do you have any like words of encouragement for, you know, somebody who's trying to, you know, get into this business, somebody who might be having analysis paralysis? Do you have any words of encouragement? Um, just get, I, it's funny because I had this conversation with a young man before. He was like, I just wholesale because I'm afraid to get out there. I said, what you do it? And somebody was offering him a home for five hundred dollars. And I said, take the damn home, rehab it and get the experience. OK, because you being scared is not going to do anything. Scared money don't make no money. And right now you're not making no money. So go out there and do it. You know, for me, I took the leap. I was fortunate enough to have my, my dad, quote unquote, give me a home and I paid it off. So I did it. You know, I could have fell on my face and lost money and nobody bought that home. 
but I did it. Mm. And so it's just like, just go out and try it. You know, I've lost money. I've made money right now. We're having a really nice cash flow for rental properties and stuff like that. But it didn't just happen. I mean, I did have success pretty quickly, but it doesn't mean that I didn't have struggles and tears and cries and fighting with my husband and him like want to do the job. It was a lot. But we're here. Mm -hmm. So if you are up for the challenge, you're up for the hard work and fears, it's worth it. It can be really good stream of income, depending on how you do it, that can afford you the opportunity. For me, I use it to pay off my student loans. Once we're done with that, it's just income. It's not as passive as people tell you. It's not that passive. It's semi-passive. Right. There's exactly. still some work you got to do. Do not let people tell you it's passive. Mm. It's not. But if you want to have that opportunity, you got to go out and do it. You are wholesale great. If that's what you do, fine. That's not my strategy, not what I like to do, but I don't knock it. Just go out there and try. And um, if you don't have money, that may be the route. If you have a little extra money, just try it. See if it works and um, go from right, there. Right, right. Yeah, I totally agree with you with that wholesaling. That's a headache. I mean, even though you're getting a large sum of money, you got to drive over here, drive over there, connect these two people together. It, it, it's just too much drama for me. So, uh, Lakeisha, you you seem like you have a lot of people that like is able to help you. Like in my situation, I have a brother, I have a good handyman, and I have a good contractor. Do you think that this is something that you could do by yourself? You see, my face is so stop. Stop it. No, absolutely not. Like, you know, with my home, like today, um, one of my tenants for my mobile home. He's a veteran and um, they were helping him with some of the payments. And my dad actually met with the guy to go deposit my check because um, I'm in Atlanta. And <laughs> the guy said, I call your dad. We're meeting in 30 minutes. I said, my dad's on it. My dad, he said, oh, I deposited a check to Keisha. So I, that kind of thing helps because that, that's been a total of three months of income that my dad was like, I'll go, I'll go pick it up for you. I'll meet the people. My dad has gone to install ACs for me. My dad has done a lot of things where like, I don't have a handyman. Or I don't have anybody right now. And my dad was like, you know, I'll go do it. I'll go help out and stuff like that. So there is no way I can do this by myself. It is definitely taking support and love of people um, to do this. Of course, some people you pay, like my handyman, I do pay him. But my dad, let me borrow his truck to go to Tallahassee one time um, to, to load all this stuff up. Um, it's been a lot of fantastic people that support what I do and encourage what I do. So there is no way I could ever do this by myself. Even if it was, if it, if it was just paid staff, I yeah. still need people around me that love me and support me that would just do this. Like, again, something simple as picking up a check and deposit it for me. I need that in my, my space and I have it. Right. And yeah. And I feel that I feel the same way as you do for sure. So Lakeisha, how long Let's just say you, you bought a mobile home, you rehabbed it. How long has the mobile home stayed on the market? Without anybody in it? Without anybody in it. It's all ready to, it's all ready to go. You're advertising it. How long? That doesn't happen for me. I start marketing that thing as soon as I buy it. I don't, okay. that, doesn't, that doesn't happen for me because I say, oh, it's available this day. So I give people a client. I say, oh, it's not ready yet. But they'll say, okay, now I need to move it anyway. Okay. I, I don't play those games. If it's sitting there, I make no money. <laughs> no way. Uh -uh. So, so Lakeisha, will you sell it in stages? Now I have done that. Like, is oh, this price? Oh, is, yeah. Is this price, if, you know, because this, this, and this deal needs to be done. Uh, or if I do this and that, then it's going to be a higher price. Ones like that. I sold on payments. I did that. And um, she finished the work herself. She was like, I'll do it. Even my ones that I rent, like it's rented before it's done. So they're just, they're just like, oh girl, it's okay. Like, I'm, I just want to make sure I get this home. Okay. And we're just finishing it up and um, then they move in and it's all good. But yeah, we did do that with one young lady because she, she wanted to move in for Christmas for her two girls. And we're like, all right, we're going to be done. She said, don't worry, girl, I can get somebody to do the rest of this stuff. And she did. Her mother came in with her and it was so great to see two women. She says, oh no, girl, we got it. We'll finish the rest. Just give us, I think I, I took off like a thousand dollars for some of the extra stuff that needed to be done. She paid her deposit. She's in there now with her two girls and it, it's a home for her and her girls. So that mm -hmm. made me feel good. And she got the rest of the stuff done too. She had family like us that helped right. her finish the project. So that was pretty nice too. Right. Well, well me and my brother made a grave era in uh, buying a mobile home in a very nice park. He said, like, oh man, it's shiny, it's new, it's cheap. 
And we had sat on that home for several months only because the lot rent was over $200 more than the other lot rents in the area. So this is the reason why, you know, it was sitting. And then when we bought it, all we had to do was sweep it out and it sat. So if anybody is listening, be careful with that lot rent. Make sure that lot rent is not higher than right. you know, the other because it's going to be sitting. And that's what happened to us. And thank goodness uh, we finally rented that puppy out. But we we did lose some money on that. Uh, yeah, other than that, say that again for people in the back, because that's what I tell my friend who's she's trying to get into this like us too. And I said, be careful with that lot rent because sometimes you look at a home, you're like, oh, it's only eight thousand dollars, and we just got to sweep it up, and then you see the lot rent that's like six fifty, and you're like, oh, whoa, be careful right. with that right. lot rent. I definitely look at that a lot too because, man, that's why I love another reason why I don't do a lot of homes here up in the Atlanta area. Lot rent is so dang high. It's yeah. like it's the same as it's more than the mortgage that I pay for my single family home. That's sometimes wow. how high. And I'm like, I'm paying $300 a month for the single family home in the mortgage, which is less than the lot rent for this. Yeah, right, it gets right, it gets right. crazy, but they own the park so they can charge what they want. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I tell you, we had bought four homes in that park. First we bought two and then we bought a third one and they rented out so quick. And then when that fourth one came, we was like, this is a no brainer. We're going to buy this whole park right. out, you know? And then we are like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> you know, like, man, and we didn't realize that the lot rent was that much higher. You know, we, we didn't do our homework and, and we sat on that home for a little bit. So that was a learning experience that I won't be doing again. And now they're offering some more homes. I'm like, I don't want no more homes from y'all unless y'all gonna decrease the lot yeah. rent. That's not gonna happen. They're not gonna, there's no way they can decrease the high lot rent. All they're doing now is like giving you some free stuff, like a month or yeah. two or yeah, storage there agreement. Be some, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm never gonna do that again. But Lakeisha, I appreciate you being on here. I appreciate your time. Are you open to any like type of joint ventures or anything like that with anybody? Do you want to share your contact information or what are your thoughts about that? So my, my, I don't have a lot of information as it relates to the mobile home stuff because I usually just kind of do it with like my own money, my own stuff with people. Um, but they can always just find me on Facebook. My name is Lakeisha C. Brooks as it is here if you have questions or anything like that. Um, if you're in the Georgia area or North Florida and you have something, talk to me. I do not wholesale. I want to repeat, I do not wholesale. So please do not ask me to joint venture wholesale because I will not do that. But if you have some great deals that you want to share with me, please go ahead and do that. I'm always open to it. I am joint venturing with someone and trying to help them move their home. They're in Florida. I'm in Georgia. So I'm able to help. So, you know, it really depends on the circumstances. And sometimes just trying to help people get out of the situation they're in. I'm, I'm able to do that as well. All right. All right, guys. This is Kelly from Hills, Hills and Wills Mobile Home Investing Course. And we just finished talking to Lakeisha C. Brooks, who is a mobile home investor and a single family home investor. And Lakeisha, I greatly appreciate you being on here. And I'm about to send you a text message as soon as we log off of here. And thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye.